you know there is one big problem with all of those circuit boards. And don't get me wrong, they all work perfectly fine and do jobs like creating a variable output voltage, dimming a light bulb, reacting to a magnetic field or for example acting as a distance sensor. But did you notice that while showcasing the function of each board, I was always using some kind of potentiometer to either set the output voltage or threshold value at which the sensor reacts. Now in most projects this is not a problem, because setting the potentiometer value once is most of the time sufficient. But let's imagine we got a project in which we drive a high power LED with a beefy boost converter, which as you can see works perfectly fine at max brightness with an output voltage of 32 volts. But the project also involves dimming the brightness of the LED at different times of the day. To keep track of time, you can combine a microcontroller with an RTC, aka real-time clock. But how can we adjust the potentiometer value with the microcontroller in order to decrease the voltage and thus dim the brightness? The solution are those little ICs right here, which are digital potentiometers and they can be a really handy digitally controlled alternative to mechanical potentiometers. And in this video I will tell you all about them and how you can easily use them to control pretty much any circuit that uses potentiometers. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by Altium. They offer probably the most professional PCB designer software on the market that comes with all the bells and whistles you could ever need in order to create professional PCB designs. And right now you can even test their software for free by following the link in the video description. So why not give it a try yourself? First off, the digital potentiometers I initially went with were the X9C103 and the X9C104. The reason was that those were the only ones that I could get quickly. But as you can see, I had to get another type in hindsight, due to a rather big problem you will later see in the video. And generally speaking, there is a huge variety of digital potentiometers you can choose from. But while looking through the datasheet of some of them, I noticed that the majority uses I2C or SPI for communication, which is quite a bit more complicated to work with than the simple three digital input pins my first potentiometers use, which I will talk about in a second. Before that, I had a look at the pinout of the ICs in order to find out where to hook up the supply voltage and grounds what pins represent the pins of a traditional mechanical potentiometer and what are the three digital inputs, which I firstly connected to tactile push buttons with pull up resistors and debouncing capacitors on a breadboard. And by the way, I'm using the 103 version of the IC here, which is a numerical code you can often see on potentiometers and it simply states the resistance value. We basically got 10 ohm with three zeros behind it, which equals 10 kilo ohm. And thus the 104 IC is a 100 kilo ohm digital potentiometer. Both ICs also share the same datasheet along with the other available values you can get. But anyway, for the power supply I went with a voltage of 5 volts, which is already close to the 7 volt max input voltage. I also connected 5 volts and ground to the upper and lower terminal of the digital potentiometer respectively. This voltage is also close to the given limits, but let's just say that I will properly stress test the given voltage and current limits later on. And for now we should try to understand how the IC works by looking at its detailed block diagram. As you can see, it consists of 99 resistors which are connected between the upper and lower terminal. The IC can now activate one of those switches at a time, which connects the wiper to this point and along the way creates two resistances. Depending on whether we move the switch close position closer to the upper terminal or closer to the lower terminal, one of the two resistances will increase while the other decreases. 
And since a voltage difference is usually applied between the upper and lower terminal, we successfully created an adjustable voltage divider. Which is exactly the same thing a mechanical potentiometer does. The only disadvantage of the digital potentiometer so far is that its wiper can only have 100 different positions. And thus a voltage of for example 5 volts can only be divided with a resolution of 100. And thus those voltage steps are certainly noticeable. Mechanical potentiometers, especially precision trimmers, definitely do not have this problem. But then again, you can also look for digital potentiometers with a bigger resolution. But anyway, after adding my multimeter in voltage measuring mode to the wiper pin, it was time to change the wiper position with my three digital inputs. And according to this mode selection table, that should be super simple to do. You have to keep chip select low. And depending on whether the up down pin is connected to VCC or ground, the wiper either moves one step up or down as soon as the increment pin is being pulled low. So you basically only have to keep those two lines in mind. And maybe this lower one as well, in which you pull the chip select pin high in order to save the wiper position in the memory of the IC, so that after new power up it still remains in that position. And with the theory out of the way, I tried out the just learn push button combinations. And as you can see, I was able to increase and decrease the output voltage without a problem. Now this 3 terminal potentiometer setup is great if you want to use it for audio amplifiers to decrease the input voltage. Or for operational amplifiers to adjust the threshold trigger voltage. But when it comes to such voltage converters, then you quickly notice that two of the potentiometer pins are always shorted. That means the potentiometer is being used as a two terminal variable resistor. Which in combination with some other resistors, builds up a voltage divider and thus creates a feedback voltage for the control IC. Sounds good so far, but this setup actually comes with three possible problems for us. First off, we have to replace the mechanical potentiometer with a digital potentiometer that comes with the exact same resistance value, because this time the value is crucial. Next, the voltage drop across the potentiometer can be quite high in this boost converter topology, that obviously outputs a high voltage, and can vary in my example from 0 volts up to 25 volts. This is of course way higher than the max voltage given by the datasheet of the digital potentiometer. But at least the given maximum current flow of 4.4 mA is higher than the actual current flowing through the potentiometer later on. So it was time to do some stress testing with the IC, to see whether I could use it with 25 volts. But sadly I have to report that the IC cannot handle such a voltage, and instead destroyed itself. While I was at it, I also tested the maximum current flow through the wiper as a variable resistor. And this value seems to be around 100 mA, before complete destruction. That sadly means we cannot use this particular digital potentiometer for the boost converter. But luckily I got this MCP41HV5110K just in time. The HV apparently stands for high voltage, which is true because we can apply a maximum of 36 volts to it. The resolution of the IC is also bigger than before, but unfortunately we have to deal with SPI codes in order to control it. But since I found a very awesomely written Instructables article about the IC with given schematic and codes, it was super simple to wire it up on a breadboard and do some simple testing. Before that though, I obviously had to solder the IC to a breadboard board and create a bit of code on my own, which either increases or decreases the wiper position depending on whether I send over U for up or D for down to the Arduino. And as you can see, my test worked out just fine. Which means it was time to desolder the old mechanical potentiometer, add the digital one in its place, wire everything up and do one final test. Which as you can see, also worked perfectly. With that being said, you should now be familiar with digital potentiometers. 
and be ready to use them in your next projects. If you enjoyed this video, then consider supporting me through Patreon, so that I can produce more of them. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!